Iran is threatening retaliation following a suspected Israeli airstrike in Syria. The attack, which flattened a building in the capital, Damascus, killed five members of Tehran's paramilitary Revolutionary Guard. Iran's president accuses Israel of spreading instability in the region and says the attack will not be left unanswered. Israel has not claimed responsibility, but the strike comes just days after Iran struck what it called an Israeli spy headquarters in northern Iraq. And the U.S. military says several of its troops were injured in another attack on an airbase in western Iraq. U.S. Central Command says Iran-backed militants launched multiple missiles and rockets at the Al-Assad Air Base, a U.S.-led coalition facility. It says most of the projectiles were intercepted, but some struck the facility. The U.S. says its troops stationed in Iraq and Syria have faced more than 140 attacks by Tehran allied fighters since the start of the Israel-Hamas war in October. Christian Halberg, Middle East expert, uh, joins me now from Berlin. Uh, Christian, would you characterize this as a harmful but limited tit-for-tat or the start of a regional war that many feared could very well happen? Well, actually, we are seeing that this war in Gaza has been spilling over as it is an old conflict that has been going on for decades between Israel and its so-called axis of resistance on one side and uh, Iran and its so-called axis of resistance on one side and Israel and the U.S. on the other side. So what has happened after October 7th is that as Hamas considers itself to be a member of this axis of resistance, every other militia would jump in trying to help and step up pressure in Israel. So this is what has been happening in southern Lebanon by Hezbollah. We have seen this with the Houthi uh, militias that are attacking naval ships in the Red Sea. And we have been seeing this uh, looking at the Iranian-backed militias in Iraq and Syria that have been attacking U.S. troops in northern Iraq and northeast Syria and have tried to attack Israeli targets. So everybody's trying to portray it, it's himself as a strong supporter of the Palestinian cause, while at the same time they are trying to avoid a full-blown war. It's more an exchange of fire, portraying mm. oneself as being determined uh, without getting into a Direct, direct confrontation between Israel and Iran or even the U.S. and Iran. Mm. And just so our viewers can have some levels of understanding here and nuance, uh, let's focus on Syria for a moment. Why are members of the Iranian uh, mil Revolutionary Guard in Syria in the first place? <laughs> Iran is a long-standing ally of the Syrian regime, and we should not forget that it was Iranian militias on the ground that, together with the Russian Air Force, helped to save Bashar al-Assad. I mean, they kept him in power. So Iran used the last few years to build up a military presence in Syria, which is something that Israel considers to be an existential threat, because Syria and Israel are sharing a border, the Golan Heights. The Golan Heights are occupied by Israel. So Syria and Israel are in a war, in a state of war officially. So this is why Israel has continuously attacked Iranian targets inside Syria, which were usually military facilities, the airport of Damascus, the airport in Aleppo, um, the transportation, because all the weapons that are going to Hezbollah in Lebanon has to cross through Syria. But this attack that we've seen in the middle of Damascus is a definite escalation because it is in the middle of a neighborhood within Damascus, the presidential palace is close by. So it is another step of escalating this war. Iran blames Israel for the attack. How likely is that? <laughs> Israel has a long history of targeted killings in the region. They have been stepping up this strategy during the last few months. They have killed Hezbollah commanders, Hamas commanders in Lebanon and in Syria. So I don't think anybody has a doubt, although the Israeli leadership never officially claims responsibility to not put their allies in the West into trouble. But I think nobody has a doubt here. And Israel wants to send a clear message that Every Hamas and Hezbollah commander or Iranian Revolutionary Guard general is not safe wherever they are. And they cannot get hold on the Hamas leadership within Gaza. So they are try trying maybe to send this strong message outside uh, to go after these kind of leaders in the neighboring countries. Mm, Kristen, no doubt this is a delicate, potentially dangerous dynamic. What's likely to happen next? 
Iran has to retaliate because it's a message of saving face, basically, internally and externally. So they will do this indirectly, as we have seen before. Uh, there might be attacks from Syrian soil by Iranian militias towards Israel from the Golan Heights. There might be other attacks, and we have just seen one on US troops in northern Iraq and northeast Syria, which has been happening continuously. There might be direct missile attacks from Iranian soil against Israeli and US targets, but all these attacks have been very limited in their damage. So it's more a symbolic meaning. It's a sending of messages saying that we are ready to react, we are able to react in case you want to escalate any further. But I don't see a strong interest neither by Iran nor by Israel or the US to get into a full blown regional war at this time. The only mm. group that would be interested is Hamas. But we have seen at the same time that all these attacks are limited so that they will not cause a major or at least direct confrontation. Iran wants to build up its nuclear potential before getting into this direct confrontation and they have not finished so far. That's uh, Middle East expert Christian Helberg. Uh, many, many thanks for your insights. Thanks to you. And to try to understand all this, uh, let's welcome Amnon Aran, a professor of international politics of the Middle East at City University of London. Um, sir, we have airstrikes in Iraq, Syria, which we just mentioned, but also Lebanon and Yemen recently. Is there a risk of a, a regional war, do you think? I think there is certainly a risk for a regional war. Uh, at this point, we're, we're seeing that most of the players involved, Iran, Israel, the United States, Iran's proxies, Hezbollah and the Houthis, are trying to keep the conflict uh, underneath the threshold of a full-blown war. However, if we look at the trajectory over the last month, we've seen that um, the conflict has inched closer to a regional war than uh, backing away from it. So we're not there yet, but the danger is considerable. And there's a, been a split, as you know uh, better than I, between Israel and the United States on the future of Gaza and the two-state solution with Joe Biden and uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu not seeing eye to eye at all. Is that disagreement um, feeding into the overall regional tension somehow? I'm not sure it's feeding into the regional tension at the moment, but certainly uh, it is a major flashpoint between the United States uh, and Israel, and it is uh, definitely uh, making it more difficult for Israel to achieve uh, its war goals, despite the use of really uh, devastating military force uh, by Israel, uh, a very, very large amounts of ammunition and so on. Uh, it is difficult to see what strategic goals the Israelis have achieved so far. And there is growing criticism within Israel that without a clear vision for the day after, as it is called there, um, it will be difficult to translate the military maneuver into uh, successful political aims, certainly the ones that were self-proclaimed by the Israeli war cabinet. And what space is there left for diplomacy now? It feels like things are, have gotten very military and tit for tat and, and escalating. Yes, I think there is still uh, room for diplomacy. Uh, the United States and France are trying to find uh, some kind of resolution for the ongoing skirmishes on the Israeli-Lebanese border, some sort of deal which will involve uh, Israel and Hezbollah uh, finding uh, some middle ground uh, and Hezbollah forces being withdrawn to the uh, to an agreed point north of the Israeli border and Israel uh, in return agreeing to some sort of concessions on the Israeli-Lebanese border. But so far, there hasn't been a breakthrough. And moreover, the Israelis are, are entrenched in their position. Uh, Hezbollah has rejected so far the American and French proposals. And the Israeli government is under growing mounting internal pressure to enable 80,000 of its citizens, which have been effectively evacuated from the northern border, to return to their homes. But in agreement with Hezbollah, that is impossible from a security point of view. So everybody is entrenched. Uh, everybody, I think, is looking for who will, uh, if you like, flinch first. There mm. is still some room for diplomacy, but the space is being reduced. Understood. And thank you for that insight. Emnon Aran, a professor of international politics of the Middle East, joining us from London.